Hello friends, this video on mineral nutrition part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The next element is potassium. Now here you can look at the picture of the stomata. You, you must be remembering the role of potassium ions in the stomatal movement. How those stomata opens and closes, we have spoken about it quite a number of times in the previous lessons. So the opening and closing of stomata is governed by the kidney-shaped guard cells. So these are the guard cells. You see, this is one guard cell, this is another guard cell. Now in these guard cells, the concentration of the potassium ions, these black dots which you see, they represent the potassium ions. The concentration of potassium ions actually makes the guard cells sometimes become swollen and sometimes become close to each other, which in turn causes the opening and closing of stomata. So you can imagine how what an important role potassium plays. It helps in the opening and closing of stomata. And because of that, the processes like photosynthesis and transpiration happens in a plant. So it plays a very important role in that way. It helps in protein synthesis. It also activates many enzymes. Now, potassium is a dominant cation present in a plant. Cation is a positive ion. So, K plus, that is a dominant cation present in a plant. It activates enzymes. When I say it activates the enzymes which are required for the process of photosynthesis, the respiration, the synthesis of proteins and starch. So, for all these processes, we need enzymes. And those enzymes are activated by potassium. Stomatal movement, as I said just now, that the opening and the closing of stomata is governed by the concentration of the potassium ions. So here you can see when the concentration of the potassium ion increases, the stomata opens. When the concentration of the potassium ion decreases, the stomata closes. So the stomatal movement is completely governed by the concentration of the potassium ions inside the guard cells. Fruit quality improvement. Now how does potassium ion improves the quality of fruit? Now it enhances the flavor as well as the color on fruits and vegetable crops. It also tends to reduce diseases on them and therefore the fruit quality improves. Now this potassium element is present in large quantities in meristematic tissues, birds, leaves and root teeth. So mainly it is present in those regions from where new growth take place. So it is present in all those areas. It maintains an ion cation balance in cells so that the perfect balance is there. If there is too much of an ion or there, if there is too much of cation that might cause problems. So it helps to maintain the ion balance. Source of potassium, it is obtained from fertilizer, of course. It is also obtained from organic materials which are rich in potassium. Now, let us see what happens due to deficiency of potassium. Now, due to deficiency of potassium, poor yield because potassium helps in the growth of the plant. So, if the growth is impacted, obviously the yield will also get impacted. Spotted or curled leaves. So you can observe this is like a deficiency symptom. What will tell you that it, the plant might be deficient of potassium. The le On leaves you often see dark spots and sometimes the leaves get curled. For example, this is a, a normal leaf without any deficiency. After being deficient, you see these kind of spots. Some yellowish color, some brown spots. So all those things are there and also the leaves tend to curl from outside. Yellowing of leaves, as I said. The next one is calcium. If you talk about the role of calcium, it helps in cell wall synthesis, spindle formation during cell division, the most important purpose of calcium. So when I say cell wall synthesis, just try to remember the composition of cell wall. So in the cell wall, you have the layered middle lamella which separates the adjacent cells below that you have the primary cell wall right so this middle lamella is made up of calcium pectate so calcium pectate so there you can see that calcium is playing an important role in the 
composition of cell wall it also helps in during spindle formation and cell division in cell division these thread like structures are formed the threads which used to form the cytoskeleton that is the microtubules the same filaments are used to form these spindle structure now these filaments are also made up of calcium so that means it also helps in the formation of spindle so now cell division cell wall they are all very crucial for the life of a living organism not only plant for any living organism so that means calcium plays an important role it also activates many enzymes which are helpful in many metabolic reactions source of calcium fertilizer of course dolomitic lime as well as gypsum so what is dolomitic lime it is nothing but an anhydrous carbonate mineral that is uh, this is it has calcium as well as magnesium so this is the composition of dolomite lime so this is also a source of calcium gypsum is again another soft mineral which is uh, which has calcium and sulfate it it can be used as a fertilizer and it is a main constituent in many forms of plaster you would have heard of plastering the walls of your house and all so that plaster it contains gypsum and gypsum has calcium so that means gypsum is also a source of calcium what would happen if the plant is deficient of calcium retarded growth in roots stems and flowers yellowing of leaf margins spots on leaves and fruits so again the symptoms are almost similar in uh, different deficiencies but not exactly similar so here you can see these are the fruits and in the fruits you see the bottom part is uh, rotten you can actually see some uh, spots on the fruits so this disease is known as blossom end rot disease in a fruit so this is the because the end part is being rotten that is why it is called blossom end rot next is magnesium it is a major constituent of chlorophyll so if you look at the structure of a chlorophyll you can see the presence of magnesium and how important chlorophyll is for a plant i don't think i need to tell you that because chlorophyll is the main um, main thing because of which the process of photosynthesis take place and photosynthesis is the process by which plants prepare their own food it also activates enzymes which are needed for growth of the plant for producing sugars fats carbohydrates it is also essential for germination of seeds so see all these small small functions together make magnesium important it also helps in rna and dna synthesis so rna and dna they are like they contain the genetic information so in plants also the genetic traits get carried from parents to the offspring that is because of dna and rna so production or uh, formation of dna and rna is very important and magnesium plays a role in the synthesis of dna and rna it also plays a very important structural role in the cell membranes not only the membrane of the cell but also the membrane of the cell organelles because we all know that in eukaryotes each of the organelle which is present inside a cell has a separate membrane for itself so in the construction of that membrane also magnesium is helpful so as i said structural role in membranes of organelles source of magnesium magnesium is absorbed as magnesium ion that is mg2 plus so it can be obtained from fertilizer it is can also be obtained from dolomitic lime as i said just now dolomitic lime has both calcium and magnesium organic materials other organic materials also has a lot of magnesium scarcity of magnesium will cause yellowing of leaves or leaves fall off early so in some plants what happen is leaves fall off before the uh, desired time now frequent falling off leaves is also not good because if the leaves are not there the sites for photosynthesis are missing so it will become difficult to carry out the process of photosynthesis and without photosynthesis nothing can happen to a plant sulfur role of sulfur here in the picture you can actually see sulfur which is yellow in color and it looks somewhat like this 
So it is a major constituent of many amino acids, vitamins, as well as coenzymes. So again, this also makes many other things. So here you can see some of the examples like cysteine and methionine. This is cysteine. This is cysteine. This is methionine. So all of them have sulfur. For vitamins, for example, thymine, biotin. So all of these has sulfur. So it is a may it, it it helps in forming so many useful things like amino acids, vitamins, coenzymes. It also promotes plant growth. It imparts flavor to vegetables. So see, these are now these sulfur, iron, zinc. All these are micronutrients. So they are needed in small amounts. So see, flavors to vegetables. So even if flavor is not there to the vegetables, the plant can still survive without a flavor to its vegetables, right? So that is how all these are called um, trace elements. That is, they are required in traces. If they are there, it is good. Even if they are not there, plants can do without them. Source of sulfur, they are absorbed as sulfate iron from the soil. They are also absorbed as SO2 from the atmosphere. Soil and atmosphere from both the places, they can be absorbed, but from soil in this form and from atmosphere in the form of SO2 gas, that is sulfur dioxide. Deficiency of sulfur can cause the fading of the color of leaves. So the, if the leaf colors were dark before, so gradually it starts fading. For example, here in this picture, you see, Earlier it was dark green, gradually it is becoming light green. From light green it will become even lighter and gradually it might even turn into white. So the color of the leaves start to fade. Excess of sulfur dioxide is toxic to plants. Now as I said, sulfur is absorbed from soil as sulfate and it is absorbed from the atmosphere in the form of sulfur dioxide. But sulfur dioxide is okay to be absorbed only if it is within a limited quantity. But if too much of sulfur dioxide is absorbed, it can cause harm to the plant. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.